This weekend I ran at another meet, uh, so that was that was a good time. I'll talk about that a little bit. Shout out to all the people who came up to me and said hi. And it's always cool to meet people who you know watch the channel, see the videos, and actually meet them in person. Because you know ultimately I make these videos so that you guys can try to learn from my experiences. You know I don't claim to know everything or really know anything, but what I do have is experience. And from those experiences, if I can help you guys learn from mistakes, maybe learn from some successes, and you can incorporate that into your training in some way, then I think you know it, we're, all, we're all better as a result. So shout out to everybody who I saw at this meet and the last meet. Great to see you guys, great to meet you guys. That was fun. So I'll talk about the meet here in a little bit. What I did today was two by 250 meters. So that's changing it up a little bit because in my training up to this point, you know, I don't remember the last time that I ran over 150 or 200 meters. Uh, it's been a really long time. This weekend was the first time I'd run a 200 in about a year. In my training this year, the furthest I've run is 150 meters. And when I look at my race times and I look at my split times and how I feel in the race, I notice that I am really lacking in the back half of my 200. And I feel like that's probably gonna negatively affect me in the 100 as well. If I'm completely dying in the back half of a 200 to the point where my second 100 is slower than my first 100, that's probably not gonna bode well even for the 100 meter. Even though I can get through the line and not slow down too much, I still think that you know I need to develop sprint-specific endurance more than anything else at this point in time. So you know, I went to this meet on this weekend prelims I ran 707 in the 60 I ran 699 in the final and then in the 200 I ran 22 26 out of lane one um, now my PR is 2197 so I'm pretty close I'm about you know 0.3 off of my PR and that's with no special endurance training so in my mind that that kind of motivated me because that means there's a huge opportunity for me to develop my 200 to improve my 200 time if I can get better at special endurance training. On the, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, I've done a, a lot of, you know, acceleration work, a lot of speed work, short speed endurance. I'm still going to keep doing that stuff because it's really important. But I think I need to change something up, give my body a different stimulus, and try to push myself in the direction of having better sprint specific endurance. So that's why today I came out. I did two by two fifty. Um, the first one was about. 90% I would say um, and then the second one was more like 96 97 percent maybe somewhere in that range um, at the 200 I ran 23.0 I think 23.04 on the free lap and then I came through the 250 at like 29 something so you can tell that if I'm going 17.0 to the 150 my PR is 16.3 but today I ran 17 seconds to the 150 23 0 to the 200 and 29 something to the 250 you can see that I'm slowing down a lot from about 100 and 150 meters onward so if I'm slowing down that much and that is something that can be developed in training the ability to maintain your speed under fatigue then I think I have room to improve so I'm excited about that looking forward to see how you know my body responds to this training it's hard though, like when you do this by yourself, it's a pain in the ass because you're stepping up to the line, it's painful, it's a long sprint, but the way I approached it was, first of all, I'm on the line, I'm telling myself, look, do you want to get better or not? Are you here to improve or are you here just to, you know, just to go through the motions? So I got a little, you know, revved up that way, started the rep pretty hard. And then once I started to feel fatigue build up, I just told myself, okay, one more step, one more step, one more step, and just went step by step until I got through the 250. And I felt like that kind of carried me through, helped me maintain my effort level without just, you know, seeing the cone way over there thinking, oh, it's so far away, I'm just gonna quit and shut it down and half-ass the back half of this rep. No, none of that. I just thought, okay, one step at a time. If I can put my foot down this step, and then I can put my foot down again on the next step, I can keep doing that. The time wasn't great, but I got through it. I did it. I'm alive. My heart rate has settled back down to 100 beats per minute. So I'm okay, you know? Made it through the workout. But now I have some benchmarks for, okay, in practice, on this track, 
what am I, you know, what can I run at 200 meters? What can I run at 250? If I can knock time off of the 250, it's probably gonna help my 200. If I can knock time off the 200 and the 150, it'll help the 200 and probably help my 100. So I'm looking at this as an opportunity to improve, an opportunity to get better. And sometimes to get better, you have to do the things you don't like. You have to do the things that are painful. You know, if you have an addiction, the only way you get over that addiction is by doing something you don't like, which is avoiding the thing you're addicted to. You know, dealing with the cravings, dealing with whatever's, you know, if you eat ice cream every night, but you're overweight and you need to stop eating ice cream so you can be healthy and, you know, all that, well, you're going to have to go through some pain. You're going to go through some struggle to get to the point to where you no longer have that crutch. You no longer need to eat that ice cream every night. If I want to run fast in the 200 and the 100, but I avoid the things that are hard, like special endurance training, then I'm never gonna reach my full potential because I'm avoiding the thing that hurts. I'm avoiding the thing that's hard. You don't need to train super hard all the time, but you do need to expose yourself to the stresses that are gonna cause your body to adapt and that your body doesn't want to do because it's hard. If it's hard, you're not that good at it. If it gets easy, you got better at it. You know, So if I can make these 250s get easier, make the 200s get easier, that's gonna help my 200 in competition, it's gonna help my 100 in competition, and when I step up to the line to run a 200, I'm gonna feel a lot more confident. So if you're someone who tends to stick to the acceleration, stick to the speed training, but avoid the longer sprinting, but your 100 time doesn't match up to your 200 time, or your second half of the 200 is way slower or noticeably slower than the first half, then you're someone who needs to do this type of work and it might be time to nut up and just put in the hard work. You don't have to do a crazy amount of reps. Like today I only did two 250s, but I ran them fast, ran them well, got that stimulus. And then the next time I can come out, try to beat those times. Once I'm able to beat those times, maybe I'll add a third one, or maybe I'll lengthen it out to 300, or maybe I'll drop it back to 200, but add another rep, you know, manipulate training like that. But don't lean away from the things that are hard you don't have to do them all the time, but you should lean into them, test your body, do the things that are challenging for you, because if it's challenging for you, that's the thing that's probably gonna lead to you getting better. So that's all I have today, guys. Hope you got something out of this video. I'll catch you next time. This is Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com and AthleteX, signing off.